So this video is going to be about the regulation of transcription. So transcription can be regulated in one of two places. So it can be regulated either at the beginning of transcription, uh, during transcription initiation, or it can be regulated after transcription has already been completed. So first we'll look at regulation taking place at transcription initiation. So control elements are going to be a segment of non-coding DNA that's going to help regulate transcription by binding to particular transcription factors. And so transcription factors can come in uh, two different forms. So we're going to have general transcription factors, which are going to be necessary for transcription of all protein coding genes. So they're always going to be involved regardless of what the product of that gene may be. And then we also have specific transcription factors, which will bind to control elements and act as either activators or repressors. So lastly, we have enhancers. So enhancers are going to be segments of DNA that contain multiple control elements that can then bind to transcription factors and help regulate transcription. So if we look at this picture, we can see an example of an enhancer right here that has these multiple control elements binding to activators, which would be an example of specific transcription factors. So then this regulatory region will interact with these general transcription factors and some other proteins to assist the transcription initiation complex in assembling and associating with the promoter so that transcription is actually facilitated um, and it makes it easier for transcription to take place. So now we can look at reg uh, regulation post-transcriptionally, so after transcription has finished taking place. So one way that this can be done is through alternative RNA splicing. And so that's going to be um, producing different mRNA molecules from the same primary transcript. So an example of a gene that this is done in is the troponin T gene. So if we look right here, we have our DNA with these different um, introns and exons. So once we make this primary transcript, the uh, cell will choose what exons to include or exclude from the mature mRNA, and that's going to influence what this mature mRNA looks like. So for example, if um, the cell decides it wants to keep exon 3 and remove exon 4, then we would get one version of the mRNA. And if we decided to keep uh, exon 4 and remove exon 3, then we would get a completely different version of the mRNA that's going to result in the production of a different protein. I hope you found this video really helpful. All images, unless otherwise stated, are from Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You can schedule a free one-on-one -on -one 30 minute appointment or you can drop in during uh, any of our normal business hours. For more details, visit www.baylor.edu tutoring.